stomach. And I think we talked about understanding, understanding faculty and the pituitary. I think we'll get back to the pituitary. Is the will center. The religionist prays to do the will of God. The spiritual initiate prays to obtain the will of God. You cannot do the will of God unless you have the will of God. We're talking about power. A man or woman who has his or her will center faculty open in his or her brain, when they think a thought, it's done. Whatever that thought is, that's how powerful you really are. I met one brother, as he had on, he said, I won't try to point out, he mentioned to me that he's got 33 mental keys. Now, this brother is thinking <coughs> of the Christ mind already. And he said every time he'd get mad that somebody or somebody would do him wrong, he would think against them, you know, that, that they would fail or have a hard time. They would fail and have a hard time. But what he needs to understand is that any thought that you send out with power comes back to you. Isaiah pointed it out. He said, my thoughts shall not come back to me void. They don't. So you send out good thoughts. That's why Jesus said, love the, your enemy. Because if you hate him, you register it in your own heart chakra. We're going to talk about samskar today. You already have power. What you're trying to do is electrify it to the atomic degree. <laughs> then to the hydrogen degree. <laughs> but you already got it. When you get to that point where the will center pops open, almost whatever you think is like that. Some of you were born with will pop center open. And whatever failings that particular person had was their own doing. Something we need to understand. Particularly about the law of karma in Kibali. Understand those laws. Because your brain, your mind is already working those laws. Okay? Even though you may not have been aware of The law of karma is how we got to a three-dimensional level. It, it isn't a judgment on God. It really, it's a blessing. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil is your spinal systems. Your autonomous and sympathetic nervous systems that allows you as a soul in a body to experience a three-dimensional existence. The fall of man is the descent of the spiritual man into flesh. One seer remembered her incarnation into her mother. She remembered seeing herself come down from an astral plane, and as she did, she got smaller and smaller and smaller, and sleepier and sleepier and sleepier, until she just came into a seat. That, that, that's how you come in. The, the yogi says... You, you come in through the medulla oblongata, through your father's neck, then are ejaculated into your mother. And so there's the two different schools of thought. But this young lady, who's an accredited seer, said she could see herself and remembered that in her meditation, how she came down. The sons of God, that's re referred to in Genesis chapter 6, were spiritual beings that includes... The, fa the family of Adams, plural, and Eves, plural, who stood up over their physical bodies 
in their spiritual nature and were unaware that they had a physical body. They were seeing things up here as absolute. There was no negation of their existence. There was only good. It was only perfect. It was only harmony, love, joy, all of the fruits of the Spirit. The serpent that spoke to them is the one running down your vertebrae on the other end of your medulla oblongata and attached to your cerebellum, the subconscious mind, who whispers, even unto this day, <laughs> that ain't right. <laughs> you can do something bad. <laughs> Go over and get your apple. <laughs> But it's the subconscious pull that brings you down into the physical. They were drawn down into a small miniature body. The key in that book of Genesis is the Niflahim. The giants were on the earth. Well, the sons of God were taller than the giants. The Catholic Duye version of Bible reads, when the sons of God materialized, okay. you know, one version reads, the materialized sons of God came down and beheld the daughters of men and saw that they were fair, began taking wives of them, as many as they chose. Those were gods, spiritual beings, your ancestors. Getting back to the will center, we're talking about a faculty in the brain that has a spiritual faculty in the spiritual brain. You have two brains, one in your astral body and one in your physical body. The physical corresponds the astral. The image and the likeness of God is in the astral that makes the blueprint or is the blueprint for your physical form. When you quicken your spiritual faculty, it opens your physical faculty. The body is the effect. The spirit is the cause. The law of cause and effect. That is the karmic law. That is also the law of correspondence. As above, so below. As within, so without. That's the law. So it has nothing to do with this man or that man being favored by God or blessed by God and the rest of me. You know, okay. That's good story stuff. You're here. You are blessed. <laughs> okay. There are souls. What one metaphysician said, there are souls struggling to beat the band, to get down here during these times. E e even the negative souls are trying to get down. So they can get their karma finished and raised. That's what time it is. Rahman, the grace of God, is at our disposal. Ruhama in the Hebrew does not mean blessing. The grace of God is power and knowledge. Bismillah ya Rahman ya Rahim is the power, knowledge that changes things. That's why knowledge is power because there is a power knowledge that, that knows, that does, and changes things. Because it has a perfect blueprint of how things ought to be. That's what you're trying, we are trying to get to. The greater your willpower is, the sooner your blessings come. This is how you bless yourself. By accurate prayer, accurate thinking. Thinking is prayer. You don't have to be on your knees to pray. You only have to think. 
Imagining is prayer. What you imagine with fervor, with passion, with desire, with energy is born on the mental plane and will manifest on the physical. The greater your spiritual powers are, the sooner the manifestation of your desire these two words are interconnected. And this is really important. If you look back, you'll see where some stuff came from. Same word. Same concept. The same act. You obtain what you desire by your will. Your will acts on what you desire. Consciously or subconsciously. In other words, if you are driven by compulsion, you're activating your desire nature. And you draw to yourself that which you desire. As to whether you want it or not. Okay. Very important. Come on in, brother. I want to get this group. Remember something here I wanted to show. I can find it real quick. 